Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Commander players. This is DJ. I'm from the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and today is a deck tech on Commander 2018 Commanders. I'm so excited because it's finally here. Let's break down the very first deck tech of the season. It's Gyrus Walker of Corpses. Gyrus Walker of Corpses is X, black, red, green for a legendary Hydra. Gyrus is a 0 0, but he enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana spent to cast it. So that's not the amount of mana you spent on X, it's the total amount of mana you spent to cast it. So if you spent three, just black, red, green, it would come in as a 3-3. Three, three. If this is the third time you've cast Gyrus this game, and the commander tax is up to four, so you pay four black, red, green, it will come onto the battlefield with seven, plus one, plus one counters. So this kind of negates commander tax a little bit, more along the lines of it rewards you for however much mana you can pump into it, and that includes the commander tax. So, whenever Gyrus attacks, you may exile target creature card with lesser power from your graveyard. If you do create a token that's a copy of that card that's tapped and attacking, exile the token at the end of combat. So we have a commander that's very flexible. You can cast him for three, and as the game scales up, your general does as well. I can imagine a deck built around this Jund Hydra, and the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I can take advantage of that trigger because when Gyrus attacks, I really want to bring something back. That's awesome. So I want to fill the graveyard with great stuff so that whenever I'm attacking with Gyrus, I'm always bringing something back. And I can bring back tons of different things because it's based on the power. When you have abilities that are based around power and toughness and not converted mana cost, you have the opportunity to cheat mana, which is very powerful. I know there are a lot of fans out there of Alicia Who Smiles at Death and Grenzo Dungeon Warden, so they know how powerful this effect can be. But one thing that sets Gyrus apart is it is a little bit more constrained. You exile the creature and then make a token copy, and that token copy leaves at the end of combat. Having a token instead of the creature itself gives us some advantages and some disadvantages, but we can't just keep cycling through the exact same creatures over and over again. We see continued creature recursion pretty often when it comes to graveyard strategies. Like we get a Grey Merchant of Asphodel and suddenly it's played three or four times across an entire game doing tons of damage. But in this deck, we are really forced to exile that creature, so we have to make sure that we keep feeding the engine. We can't really create an easy loop, instead we just get to keep getting value. I think I kind of like that effect. It makes it kind of interesting when you can't do the same thing over and over and over again, just cycling through one powerful effect. Instead, we get to play powerful cards, get them to the graveyard, bring them back again, and they're done. We have to move on to another creature to get more effects and generate more power. So the first thing we need to talk about is getting stuff into the graveyard. I'm pretty sure that we can cast our commander pretty quickly, so it's better if we can get stuff into the graveyard quickly, and it's even better if we can get creatures into the graveyard, especially if they have low power. So let's take a look at this first category, which is some of the most efficient ways to get things in the graveyard. Top it off, Entomb. A single black mana, an instant, put something into the graveyard. It's just perfect. We also have Jared's Orders. This is a really great value card because it's two black green. You get to search your library for two creatures. One goes in your hand and one goes in your graveyard. It's great to feed your graveyard and you get your next creature drop as well. And then finally, we have an awesome tutor. Really just great because it's Gamble. One red mana. Search your library for a card, put the card in your hand, discard a card at random, then shuffle your library. Sometimes Gamble can be great, and sometimes Gamble could be a sorcery speed and tomb. We're okay with both of those. But notice that all of these are instants and sorceries. We want creatures because creatures are what we can get back with our commander. So card like Golgari Grave Troll. 
four and a green for a zero zero. I like that it's zero zero, that power is low, but when it enters the battlefield, it gets plus one plus one counters for each creature card in your graveyard. It's nice because I can get it back and it could theoretically be big even though I can get it back early. But I really like the Dredge Six. Dredge Six is so powerful because that can just fill up your graveyard so quickly with many, many more creatures. Corpse Connoisseur is one of the best creatures that we can have because it's an Entomb on a dude. It also has its own unearth ability in case you don't want to quote unearth it with your commander. And finally, we got Value Seder Wayfinder. It gets you a land and also mills you and it comes down right before your commander. It's a 1-1. One, one. These three are perfect cards for this deck. But make sure to think about these effects. Effects like Dredge, Unearth, or Incidental Mill. These are going to be very powerful in this whole strategy. Next, we have a very broken effect, and that's on Survival of the Fittest. It's an enchantment that lets you discard a creature card to get whatever creature card you want from your library and put it into your hand. This fills up your graveyard and gets you exactly the right creature you want to cast. It's perfect in this deck. Fauna Shaman is a creature version of it. Some people don't like it as much because it requires a tap, but it being a creature means that we can bring it back to the battlefield. <sighs> we do have to bring it back to the battlefield tapped and attacking, which means that we don't have the ability to activate it. So maybe Fauna Shaman is, isn't as good as its enchantment brother, but it's far cheaper than its enchantment brother, so maybe it's good after all. There's also a few creatures that send themselves to the graveyard, Merciless Executioner and Fleshbag Marauder. This will clear the way for your commander. We do want a lot of creature removal because our commander has to put itself in danger, has to attack to get this great trigger. But with Merciless Executioner or Fleshbag Marauder, we sacrifice them, send them to the graveyard, we clear the way for our commander, and then we can bring them back again, causing a second edict effect, which makes it more likely that our commander will get through next turn as well. And Shriek Maw is very targeted. I like this. The evoke can come down before our commander. We can evoke it. And then suddenly we have a 3-2 in the graveyard that can kill something on its way back in. Notice these are three power. Just keep in mind the power of all of these creatures because it's going to be relevant for how much mana we push into our commander because obviously the more mana we push into our commander, the more options we have. Cards like Secure Tribe Elder and Wood Elves are gonna be great because they ramp us to produce a bigger commander. And then when we bring them back, they ramp us again. So in case our commander dies or actually just getting more mana is great anyways. So really these ramp creatures are the core of this deck and we're gonna have way more than two. And Secure Tribe Elder is just amazing because it sends itself to the graveyard. One of the most powerful creatures to have in your graveyard is Anger. Anger says that if it's in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures have haste. This speeds up the clock on your commander and your commander needs to attack to be relevant. So we want to keep Anger in our graveyard and keep our commander attacking. Similarly, Garna the Blood Flame works so well. We know that haste is really important, but also we're going to be sending a lot of creature cards to the graveyard. Most of the time we want them there, but sometimes we might not. Let's say, for example, we're dredging a Golgari Grave Troll. We're putting six cards from the top of our library into our graveyard. Well, we could flash in a Garna and suddenly get a bunch of creature cards to our hand and recoup all of that. And then also, giving everything haste is very powerful, especially when we have this commander that needs to attack. We are an attacking deck. So let's talk about having low power but super high impact. Well, we want the exact opposite for our commander. We want as high a power as possible. And we can always pump a bunch of mana into this Hydra, but we could add some synergies with plus one plus one counters. Doubling Season and Primal Vigor will double the plus one plus one counters our commander, making Gyrus doubly as large, but then also has another interesting effect. The creatures that we're bringing back are creature tokens. Doubling Season, Primal Vigor, those will double up those tokens. When you copy a token, you copy it exactly but you don't always copy the condition of the token, which means that the token you copy is not going to be tapped and attacking. It also won't have that delayed trigger of exiling it at the end of combat. So let's talk about some powerful cards with low power. 
Master of Cruelties is a classic. Three black red for a 1-4 demon. With first strike and death touch, Master of Cruelties can only attack alone. Whenever Master of Cruelties attacks a player and isn't blocked, that player's life total becomes 1. Master of Cruelties assigns no combat damage this combat. If Master of Cruelties is ever in your graveyard, your opponents have to respect your commander. Because your commander can attack, and then exile Master of Cruelties, whip out a token that's an exact copy, and by the way, it's already tapped in attacking, so that second line of text of Master of Cruelties can only attack alone, well, that doesn't matter because it's already tapped in attacking. Your commander forced it to do that. So, if they have no blocks, Master of Cruelties, bringing their life total to one, and then your commander will finish the player off. Yeah, that's a, that's a cruel combination right there. Here's what I like about the combo in this specific deck. It's a one and done. Master of Cruelties is then exiled, and you can't keep doing this over and over again. I really like that Master of Cruelties has Death Touch. Because we're dealing a lot with combat, Death Touch is gonna be a really powerful effect. Let's talk about a few more cards that have low power, high impact. Hornet Queen, for green green, for a flying death touch, love it, insect, and it's only a 2-2, two -two, but that's because she brings with her four flying 1-1 one -one death touching insects, I love it. Ignition Team is a 7 mana 0-0, zero -zero. that's because it comes onto the battlefield with a ton of plus one plus one counters, so many, because it's equal to the number of tapped lands on the battlefield, oh, this thing can get huge. Speaking of huge. Just the name alone. Gigantomancer. Yes, this 8-mana 1-1 one, one human shaman is insane because it has an activated ability. One target creature you control becomes 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn. So Gigantomancer has a crazy activated ability. You can bring him back and then suddenly pay, I don't know, 1-1-1. One, one, one. This can make your whole team huge. Also, Gigantomancer works really well with your commander because it makes the base 7-7. Seven, seven. And your commander's power and toughness is all plus one, plus one counters. So Gigantomancer will essentially give your commander plus seven, plus seven. Whereas if you apply it to some of your other creatures, it might not have that big of an effect because it kind of changes the power and toughness to 7-7. Seven, seven. Finally, we have Multani, Yavamaya's Avatar. This is just a powerful creature. I've been really impressed whenever I've had a chance to play him. Four green green for a zero zero with reach and trample. Gets plus one plus one for each land you control in each land card in your graveyard. That means that Multani is a zero zero in your graveyard, in your library, but on the battlefield, it checks for all the lands, which means that you can bring him back and he'll be huge. By the way, you can also bring him back just by paying one and a green. So maybe it's not so good to exile Multani, but if you need a big beater, go ahead and smash in with this guy. Now I mentioned how Death Touch would be really valuable. And so I've looked at a few Death Touch creatures that I think are particularly good. Gaunti, Lord of Luxury. All I wanna do is cast Gaunti. Flicker him in and out, bring him back from the graveyard. Gaunti happens to have Death Touch as well. So I get to steal your cards from your library, get card advantage, and I'm still attacking with something with Death Touch. Skullwinder, again, a phenomenal effect. I love getting something back from my graveyard, but also I can sometimes leverage the political situation to let you get something back from your graveyard that's actually gonna help me. Skullwinder can sometimes be a three for one, whereas other cards don't have that option. Then we have Thorn of the Black Rose. I think that Monarch is gonna be particularly powerful in this deck. If we have a lot of cards with Death Touch, yeah, we have a lot of creatures messing with the board. In fact, do you know what? We might even give up the Monarch if it clears the way for our commander to attack and get a ton of value. And Dire Fleet Ravager, three black black for a 4-4 with Menace and Death Touch. This thing's getting through, but when it enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of his or her life rounded up. So bringing this back makes all of our attacks a little bit more critical because everyone's life is just a little bit lower. There's another removal spell on a creature, Duplicant. Two power, exiling something, getting huge himself. This card is amazing. And it goes along with the Merciless Executioner, the Fleshbag Marauder, and Shriek Maw that I mentioned before, but Duplicant doesn't send itself to the graveyard. Doesn't matter, exile's important, that low power is key. 
And we want to kill more than just creatures. Ingot Chewer can destroy an artifact, and it's got that evoke, which means you can send it straight to the graveyard. Acidic Slime hits a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, look, it's got Death Touch too. It's perfect for this deck. And Bane of Pop Progress is so strong, just wiping away everything. And it's a 2-2, two, two, 2 power. So you can bring this back, wipe everything else away again, and look at that plus one, plus one counter synergy as well. And finally, a little bit of card advantage, Imperial Recruiter gets all of these. It's a tutor. It's a tutor for exactly what you need. Imperial Recruiter is amazing. Two and a red for a 1-1 one, one Human Advisor. When Imperial Recruiter enters the battlefield, search your library. For a creature card with power two or less, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. That is not every creature, but it's so many creatures. Some of the ones I just named, Bane of Progress, Acidic Slime, The Duplicant, Gaunty Skullwinder, the Thorn of the Black Rose, Hornet Queen, Ignition Team, Multani, all of these cards you can get in and so many more. Also, we have Grenzo Havoc Razor. This is card advantage, this is value, and also Goad. Goad is great because it makes players attack each other, leaving open lines for your own combat. So I've described to you how to get things in the graveyard. We've looked at so many creatures that synergize together with this high impact but low power. I want to talk a little bit more about recycling, about making sure that you keep up these redundant effects and that you keep your value. The first way to keep your value is Sundial of the Infinite. This crazy card is so useful. It's a two mana artifact and it says one and tap, end the turn. Now you can only do this on your turn, but this is incredibly powerful. It means that everything that was gonna happen just kind of whoop stops. Especially when you have a bunch of tokens created by your general and you don't want them to go away. You can just deal combat damage and before your creatures have a chance to disappear at the end of combat, poof, you just end the turn. That's it. All of the opportunities for your creatures to leave are over and you will keep them for the rest of the game. Well, until someone kills them. They're, they're dangerous tokens after all. But there are other ways to cash in these tokens. I love Ghoul Caller Gissa. Three black black for a three four. You can sacrifice another creature to put X two two black zombie creature tokens on the battlefield where X is the sacrificed creature's power. This creates an interesting tension. What I'm trying to get at is that we want to be able to cash in the tokens that are already going away or send a relevant creature to the graveyard so we can get it back again with our commander. But many of those creatures have very low power, and Ghoul Caller Gisa rewards us from having high-powered creatures. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, some of these creatures could have tremendously high power, like that Ignition Team, or the Multani, or the Gigantomancer, or our commander itself. And I'm not even going to mention the synergies with putting more tokens onto the battlefield with Doubling Season and Primal Vigor. I think that the key is, is that you want to make sure to get value out of the creatures that are going away anyways. So Sundial of the Infinite prevents them from going away. Ghoul Caller Gisa, well, that changes them into massive amounts of zombies that can be a different kind of threat. I like having different kinds of threats in this deck. Finally, let's look at a few redundant effects. Whip of Erebos. Whip of Erebos is powerful because it gives your creatures lifelink, I like that. But then also, it lets you return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. And you can activate this ability only as a sorcery. So you can whip back creatures straight on the battlefield and then you still have to exile them. But that's okay. Whip seems to be a huge downside in some decks because you don't want them exiled, but in this deck since your commander's exiling them anyways, Hey, you don't got much to lose to run the whip. Azareth the Awakener is also an interesting effect. It does something pretty similar, and it has Death Touch? Yes! One thing is that this is also centered around attacking, so it feels very similar, although definitely not as powerful as our commander. It could just be another interesting, redundant effect. And we don't have to be afraid of that exile. Felton of the Third Path uh, is amazing. It creates a token that's a copy of target creature in our graveyard. We like tokens because we're set up to take advantage of them, but it doesn't exile. It just creates a token copy and the token goes away at the next end step. So we like tokens and then Felden not making us exile means that we can whip the creature back later. We can bring it back with our commander. Man, we can really see the advantages of not having to exile. 
Isareth the Awakener is from the most recent M19, and it seems to fit everything that we want. It's got Death Touch, like Death Touch, good on defense, good on offense, and then when it attacks, you get to pay mana to get something back. This just shows how great our commander is that we don't even have to pay mana. But again, redundant effects are solid. Now, I may have mentioned some of the tension, and you might think, let's include a bunch of reanimator because we're sending stuff to our graveyard, but then you're thinking, well, I'm also exiling stuff out of my graveyard. I think it's okay to have a little bit of reanimator theme in here. There's going to be a plenty of stuff in the graveyard, and I think that one creature that is particularly good is Phyrexian Delver. Because we're sending lots of stuff to the graveyard, not just a single creature at the time, we can bring back Phyrexian Delver, bring it back with our commander, and then get another creature back for free. In fact, we might be so good at putting creatures into our graveyard, we might want to run a card like Living Death. One thing to remember is that this is not a traditional reanimator strategy. Our graveyards aren't going to be as full, but getting value out of throwing things in there and then recycling them back is going to be just great. I have one last piece of tech for you that's really the embodiment of this entire deck, and that's Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod is so good because it sends cards to the graveyards, pulls cards out of your library, it moves up the mana cost chain as you put more and more relevant ETBs into play and then into your graveyard, and then your commander whips them back into play. I'm really excited about Birthing Pod. I'm really excited about building a toolbox deck. And I have one last card to mention. It's Desecrated Tomb. Every single time we get a creature back out, bam! get a 1-1 one, one bat. I just want a place to put the bat card. Uh, Birthing Pod is, is, is actually really good though. So what did we learn about this commander? I think it's great. I think that you might point to other graveyard commanders like Mirin or Carador and say, well, those are so much better, but it's not about being better. It's about creating something different. And this is sort of a Jund ETB toolbox deck. Don't think about it as a graveyard deck or reanimator deck. It's basically a little bit of everything, a little bit of graveyard, a little bit of aggro, a little bit of classic Hydra. And what you're gonna do is use all of your creatures, your whole creature suite to just jund them out. I want to thank TCGplayer.com because they sponsor the entire Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. If you click on the link in the description, it will take you to a page where you can buy uh, all of these Commander products. In fact, you can pre-order all four decks from TCGplayer.com right now. I also want to thank my patrons who make all of these videos possible. Patrons, this is all for you. Thank you so much for supporting me and helping me out with everything. guys. We're right in the middle of Commander 2018. There's so many more decks to break down, so many more amazing Commanders to talk about. Join me for plenty more videos.